Hey John here. So I got a couple of things here that are kind of neat. Uh, here's a board I just got back from PCBWay. Here's what you get when you get in there. So here's the, uh, I guess I ordered five of these things. I guess I get a little sticker with this thing. These are the boards for my 2055 project, the LPC 51U68 breakout board. This is the larger of the two boards that I should have on my website, on my GitHub site. Uh, so if you want to make one of these, I'll show you how to solder this together. Somebody asked me to do a soldering video on how to get a LQFP uh, soldered into one of these. So I'll have to have a look at that. And I found a new USB connector on DigiKey that might be easier to solder in than the ones that I used in some of my earlier uh, example breakout boards, a little power supply that I made in my KeyCAD tutorial series. This is a mini USB rather than the micro USB. This one's from TE Connectivity. Uh, and this is an order from DigiKey. I guess this came in a, <laughs> it's a portion of a tray. I'll put a link to this in my, uh, in the description of this video. Let's have a quick look, see at this. So rather than being a micro, this is a mini and it is a through hole part. So that's the excitement here and that it might be easier to solder in in the little surface mount thing that I used last time. I mean, I got it to work. Okay. You should be able to do it, but you know, if you're having trouble, the connector, it turns out, in my opinion, is harder to solder in than the than these LQFPs. So let's uh, have a look. See, uh, let's see if it fits in the footprint that I put on my board. So uh, I want to be careful that I don't cut with my blade across the face of the board because it'll go in there and mess up the solder mask. It's okay for me to mess up a little bit on the side of the board if I want to. I'll go ahead and dig the blade in this side. Didn't scratch them too bad. There we go. Hot off the presses. So yeah, I ordered, this is a Friday evening right now. I ordered this Monday morning on my way out of the house to work. So that's not bad. Only a couple of days. You know, you do a weekend's worth of projects. You design yourself a new board. You ship it out and it's right back in your hands ready for the next weekend's project. Let me see if it fits in there. It would be nice because I actually used uh, a different footprint than the one for the specific part here. It fits in there perfectly. I really think this is going to be easier to deal with than the surface. I, I know it is. It's obvious. That's great. I'm digging that. All right, so before we solder this thing up, let's have a really close look at this board. Now, this is the board from PCBWay, and you can clearly see that the solder mask now does run between these pins. You can see it covering up the, the uh, copper here and here as well as there. Now, this board is project number 2055. The video that I talked about that I screwed up my settings was project number 2054, all right? So these boards are very similar. This has a larger chip on it. It says the uh, LPC 51U68 64 pin version, and the project I did in detail in video number 29 was the 48 pin version, all right? So rather than redo that board and buy another one, since I was able to solder it Anyway, it came out all right for me, uh, but it was wrong, and I want to make sure everybody understood that, right? Okay, so I changed the settings, send this one off to PCB way. Now, if we look really close, you can still see the solder mask ends right along in here. It does not go through in between these pads, in spite of the fact that it covers up right here. So this is the kind of thing that I've seen in the past with various vendors. They know dang well that the reason I got the mask between the pins all the way around this socket, the number one reason is because I don't want to create a solder mess on these specific pads. So they probably probably went out of their way to make sure that they put a little bit of solder mask in these areas as a favor to me so I could get what I wanted out of my design. But they did not run it between every uh, one of the pads. When I received this board back, I went back and checked all the Gerbers and everything else. And I thought maybe I made another mistake. No, it just so happens that if you order your board from PCBWay, maybe they cannot deal with this small of a uh, solder mask thread between the pins. If we look around the board, 
Here's the uh, pads for the USB connector. You can see it's backed off around these connectors a little bit. That might be the, that's about the one and a half mil. They might actually have backed it off more. Again, vendors can just go in here and say, you know, they understand their process. I, I don't, you know, they understand it much better than I do. And they know that their, their process might cause more harm than good if they do what I gave them. So they may have actually increased the, um, the clearance on this as a favor to me, just so that I could get their cheap rate and get their, uh, you know, get the board I want. You can see here, this is 2055, my GitHub project number, uh, as opposed to 54, again, which was the previous video. Here is some close-up of the pads of the voltage regulator. It looks like you won. We can see uh, solder mask. You can see a little bit of the trace coming in here as well as along in here so the mask is not right up against the pad you can clearly see it right here it ends right there comes across here maybe a little bit of copper coming out here as well so the mask doesn't really cover the pad at all which is fine that's this is great that's what you want to have right uh, clearly, this is a hassle board. <laughs> the, these are completely plated with uh, solder, in this case, leaded solder. Uh, here's another view of the pads around the push buttons for the ISP and reset. Um, you, again, you can see the mask as it comes up near the, the pads. This one's not really centered that great. I mean, great. I mean, this is a pin, right? This is really small. So again, this might only be uh, two mils or something like that. So that's, uh, you know, that's really class tied up in there. Again, perfectly reasonable for the work that I need to do on this particular board. After I soldered it together, here's a close-up look of the pins from the processor and all of the fillet soldering in there. And you can see a little bit of white fuzz along in here. Uh, clearly, that's part of the Q-tip <laughs> leavings from uh, me trying to mop up some of the flux with an alcohol-soaked Q-tip. All right. Clearly, you can see the little solder mask in there. And unlike my four, uh, 54 project board, uh, where I messed up the solder mask. I don't have the solder blobs between these pins. Again, I'm sure PCB Way knew that, and that's why they focused on that and didn't bother to concern themselves with the rest because it's less likely to happen on these pins over here anyway. So after I did a little checking of the board to verify things were okay with the boards I received from PCB Way, and yes, the board worked except for a problem I'll talk about in a minute. Um, I went ahead and shipped another board off to Oshpark with the same solder mask settings just to see how Oshpark would do. Any kind of a comparison contrast sort of thing. And you can clearly see over here that the mask is running between all of these pads. You can also see it's a little bit off center. All right. This one here looks like it's really obvious that it's a little bit off center. Right. So here's the, ma the hole for the solder mask. And then here's the pin that that hole is supposed to be exposing. And yes, it exposes the pin, but it's a little bit off, off center. And again, that's ex expected, right? You know, this is a half a millimeter between here and there. There's going to be error. That's why they tell you not to put this all the way up against that, that uh, copper pad. So, again, this is perfectly fine. It will definitely keep the solder from blobbing up and running between these two pins. All right. So this is a comparative contrast. It looks like it's a better quality board. Uh, the silk screen's a little bit more readable. Again, this, this, the height of this is about a millimeter or, or one and a half millimeters anyway. So you can't expect that to come out perfect. Uh, and yet, you know, I, it, it works for me. It's readable. So I'm very happy with this. All right. Uh, here's a close-up of the regulator, same area that we just saw from PCB Way. Again, because this whole board is shifted to the left, as you saw on the CPU. If I ordered another one, it could have been shifted down or to the right. Again, it can be off by, you know, a millimeter or not a millimeter, a one mil or two, uh, according to their spec. All right. So again, it's a little bit to the left, but absolutely well within reason. Here are the holes for the USB connector. This is fine as well. You can see ever so slightly shifted to the left because you can see a gap over there and no gap around here to the right. 
the Ash Park version of the ISP and reset pins. Again, shifted ever so slightly to the left. Perfectly serviceable. Very happy with these boards. Actually, I'm happy with both of them. I would say that Ash Park's board is better quality. It certainly is better to have a gold-plated board than a hassle board. Uh, but uh, they're, they're both very serviceable as far as I'm concerned. I can work with either one. All right, so let's talk about the little mistake that was on the first version. If we zoom in closely here, you'll see this is uh, revision 3A already, okay? Now, the board that I shipped out to PCB Way, the real difference between these two boards is someone put this connector in upside down. I, I don't know who that could have possibly been. Uh, these numbers here, I flipped around. Oops. Now, luckily for me, this connector is exactly symmetric, all right? So what does that really mean? When I laid out the PC board, I had pins one through five reversed. Now, fortunately, it's a through-hole part, which basically means if I mount the connector upside down, in other words, on the back of the board, it effectively reverses these pins. So I was able to verify my design and everything else and everything worked perfectly, except for the fact that I put these pin numbers in the wrong order on this schematic. Now this, this symbol that I grabbed out of the library didn't mark which one of these are supposed to be DMDP and so on. I looked it up in the data sheet and I foolishly read it wrong. I guess I cannot stress enough <laughs> how foolish you feel when that happens. You know, all the stuff that works on here and the dumb connectors backwards. But again, I got really lucky. All I needed to do is put the connector on the wrong side of the board to compensate for the fact that I had the pins in the reversed order. Now, having said that, I think that's in Rev 1 and or uh, Rev 2 of this schematic. In Rev 3A here, it has been corrected. This is on my GitHub page. I fixed it and pushed it up as soon as possible in case anyone uh, is <laughs> hot and bothered to run off and build their own breakout board for this chip. Uh, at um, ever so slight savings, pointless uh, cost reduction over buying one, which you're free to do as well. Now, the reason, by the way, I did it is because I wanted to be able to access every one of these pins unencumbered uh, from the uh, features on the standard breakout board, which is otherwise perfectly serviceable. So there we have a... Uh, a mishmash of thoughts and a little bit of a comparison between the boards that I got made from PCB Way versus Osh Park. So let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.